video games Whoa. are for nerds. Aww. But that doesn't mean we can't talk about them. That's why you're listening to The Week in Gaming, the only gaming podcast that breaks down the last seven days and tears games apart from the inside. Ugh. So forget your worries, open your ears, and join Simon Miller and a co-host for the entertainment chatter you need. Also, screw Dark Souls. Hello and welcome to The Week in Gaming. My name is Simon Miller. Thank you very much for tuning in or listening or downloading whatever we do in 2018 on a rainy, blistery Monday evening. Uh, I, if you missed it, I will say, amazingly, we did do a special edition of The Week in Gaming, which I was just saying to my good friend Sam, who I'll bring on in just one second, that nobody ever wants to do The Week in Gaming. Not in a bad way, but obviously if you don't know, this is all supported by patreon.com for us, Simon316. There is a tier where you can pay a bit of money and you can come on and join me for one my podcast most people want to come on the wrestling podcast which i get that's where my bread and butter is these days and i love it either way but amazing someone said he wants to come on the weekend game was like man you can do whatever you want and that, it was a nice little surprise but that's a little special edition that went up a couple of days ago so go do listen to that but as always it's monday we're back to it and of course sam is joining me sam how are we i'm fabulous on this gray day we've been complaining about all, all summer about the heat and now it's gray and i'm i'm like i'm cool i'm cool with that yeah i'm all right with it i don't like the heat and some people go oh, you can't moan about it i'm like yeah but i never moan when it's wet and, wet and miserable i love it when it's wet and miserable which is odd because most it sounds like i'm really sort of downbeat miserable. i just don't i like the cold weather i'm, a, I'm a, a, you know i'm naturally quite warm temperature wise so yeah, yeah I, I far more prefer that now we've got a lot to talk about today uh, video games are finally starting to to, to to ramp up again. I guess we should start with Call of Duty, really. Let's keep it timely. I mean, we are going to get into Venom as well, as we promised last week. And boy, howdy, do I have a lot to say about that. We kind of got This is kind of like a well-balanced podcast. We're going to talk about Call of Duty. We're going to talk about Venom. Sam's been playing something called The Missing, um, which is made by the dude that did Deadly Premonition, so that's interesting. And obviously, a load of Red Dead 2 Redemption details have come out, mostly about the, the back end of Red Dead Redemption 2 development cycle. So we're going to go talk uh, about all of that. But I think we should start with Call of Duty. I think that makes the most sense. Black Ops 4 came out on Friday. Um, it's weird. It kind of Call of Duty now, I remember back in the day, back in the day, not even that old, not long ago, but when Call of Duty came out, it'd make a, a real, it's just a real impact. And everybody would talk about it for a while. Now it still does amazing. Like, you know, all the kind of trending stuff for it, it's still through the roof. People are loving it. But it, it doesn't really have that explosion like it used to. Like it came on on Friday, and I feel like if you wanted to miss the buzz, you absolutely, you absolutely could. But it was still, you know, it's reviewed very well. I'll say that. I think it's probably one of the best um, reviewed ones. I, I don't want to say. I, I, I would guess it's one of the best reviewed Call of Duty. Well, I don't know how well World War Two did. I know there was an article that went up on Eurogamer. I think it's probably everywhere. I saw it on Eurogamer that apparently Black Ops Four physical launch sales are the lowest Call of Duty has seen for a decade. But digital sales are up, and until we get all of those figures, I don't know. You know, I don't know what that means. I, I yeah, what's interesting about that is that digital sales have set a record for the series. Well, there we go, right? So I think we. So need... I mean, I think that indicates more of a shift in the industry than it does anything about Call of Duty as a series, because Black Ops Four is like box sales are down like the worst since Call of Duty Four, and it's also the second highest selling game of the year. So yeah, exactly. Right. I, I, that's the thing. I need I need to see those. So I think. I'm, I'm guessing here, it's something I read earlier, but I'm 99% sure this is correct. Uh, I think Black Ops 4 physical sales were down 50% compared to World War II last year, or WW2, whatever you want to call it. But again, like you said, if, if it's smashing it in digital, then it makes no difference. At the end of the day, it's the bottom line and it's the actual number you can tally up that matters. Especially because for some reason we're in 2018 and digital sales still cost a fortune. Like you get, there's no benefit for buying online at all in terms of money. You're still, you're still dropping that cash. Uh, anyway, yeah. so so that's kind of the, uh, the, the well, that's the kind of the behind the scenes bit. But in terms of the game itself, now I think we've both been doing this. I've mostly been playing uh, Blackout, as I believe you have as well. I actually think I should have gone up today. I haven't looked. I think BG twenty four seven are putting a video of me playing Blackout up at some point if you'd like to watch it. So uh, yes, uh, that's going to go up. But before I I weigh in, I'll, I'll I'll sort of pass over to you and you tell me where you are with with whatever you've been playing of call of duty but specifically blackout for now well i don't think i've ever been excited for a call of duty game until now because i do like the inherent idea of battle royale but like i'm a bit burnt out with fortnite because that's my game of choice and since, until now there's only really been one game of choice for who wants it because people who play pubg play pubg and fortnite and they don't play 
both, if you know what I mean, usually. Um, so I think it's the, the right time for people to come along and have another choice. But with the first person perspective, obviously you've had PUBG, but it's, it's you know, it's not a committed first person perspective battle way out with this kind of long, it seems like that's filled the filled the gap you know filled the market for the first person perspective battle way out and you think it's just a perspective change but it really does change the way you have to play because like i just got shot from behind in my first game but like if it was Fortnite or something i wouldn't i would be able to see them very easily and i wouldn't yeah. have been shot in the back uh, and you could sort of look around without having to put yourself in danger because obviously your camera. Um, and yeah, it's just a massive, massively different way of playing. And it's really, I think it's more intense because you've got that fear because you can't stay hidden and look around. You can either stay hidden and not know what is going on around you or go out to have a look around and risk getting shot. And it's really, it's a really, really gripping and I think the most excited I've been for a game for a while, a multiplayer game at least as well. No, I, I tell you, I think the bizarre thing with it as well is, I don't know if you found this, when I sat down to play it, I couldn't get Fortnite out of my head in terms of controls and setup. Like, you know, trying to, obviously I played Call of Duty far longer than I have Fortnite, but just because of that, because it is so similar, you know, you helicopter in, you've got a big map that is basically is Fortnite's map. I mean, I know it's, it's shaped differently and, and, and the, the, you know, the geography of it is different, the names are different, but it still is the same thing. <laughs> You know, in terms of specific things that you have to go to, and each one has a different feel, and there's some surprises in in each of the areas that you go to. But that was really, really strange. Even when I picked up my first uh, first weapon or item, I was like, this, "I mean, it is Call of Duty." But I, and my point being, it's really showed me how much how Fortnite has much inflicted me when it comes to this kind of uh, this kind of approach and this kind of design. It's but, the mentality as well. Like I went to build as soon as I got shot, and that's just the mentality you yeah. have for Fortnite. Well, I'm not going to lie, I don't. I, I never really built in Fortnite anyway. I, I, I much prefer it without the building. Like, I, I, yeah. This isn't me shitting on Fortnite at all, because my word, the success that that's become, and I'm sure yeah. the success that it continues to do, but for me personally, what I like, I don't like, I don't like the building. That's why I didn't do it in Fortnite. I couldn't get my head around it. I didn't enjoy it, so I just put it, pushed it to one side, to my detriment, admittedly. The strange thing about Black Ops is, uh, well, Blackout, and I, I do think it's good. I actually, I, I think if I was going to choose a Battle Royale mode to play, it would be that one. I mean, I played PUBG for about a second, so, yeah, it's probably not a fair criticism. But I think the one thing I took away from it is, and again, I don't think, I'm not saying this is a bad thing because I understand you're trying to tap into the market and you're trying to tap into the success that's been created by this genre, but I kind of wanted this to be a Call of Duty version of Battle Royale but instead, what I feel like I've got is a Battle Royale game that was made by Treyarch. Does that make sense? Like, I really wanted yeah. it to feel a bit more Call of Duty, but it doesn't. It, and again, it's not a criticism. This is a purely observation that doesn't happen to you know, appeal to me. But yeah, like, because I, I, I thought to myself, because I'm awful at it. I'm absolutely terrible. Again, you can go watch this VG 24-7. I don't know where it's going up, but when it's up, I'll, I'll put it out on my Twitter at Simon316. And I'm awful. I'm so shit. And I understand that it's my fault. Um, but I went to play Team Deathmatch quickly because I was like, I wonder if. And I was, I'm not saying I was great, but you know, I think I finished with like 10 kills, six deaths, finished second in my thing. I was like, okay, so I still can play Call of Duty. Like it has passed me by to a certain extent. And it is a young man's game. It sounds ridiculous, but it's true. However, when I jumped back into battle, I just couldn't do it. And I think it's just what I guess I was hoping. And maybe this is just something that is not possible when it comes to that mode is. I wanted that Call of Duty fast-paced, uh, you know, trigger-happy action within that world. But I don't think you can do it. I think it has to be so paced. I think it has to be methodical. I think you have to think about it a bit more. Yeah, so, I think it's just like it's just inherent with Battle Royale. Like, it's search and destroy, it really, isn't it? Like, you've got the one-life system. You're not going to be as trigger-happy as stuff. I guess it just depends on the person. You're more than welcome to go around trigger-happy, but I, I reckon you'll get shot extremely quickly. Yeah. And it's just, it's just yeah, I know what you mean, because you expected that cool duty, like, bam, bam, drop shot, bam, bam, round the corner, bam, bam. But it's like, that's that's just not with Battle Royale, and I guess you sort of go into that knowing that, if you know what I mean. Yeah, well, I think I was being a bit silly on my own end. I, I wasn't, I was just hoping it would be that, but then when you kind of play it, so like, well, I don't know how it can, because, again, you've got this huge map. I think, is it 88 players if you play it in solo? Is that right in the Call of Duty one? I think that's right, or something like that. I, I don't know. I think so, yeah. I have no idea about the player numbers. I did hear rumblings of 100, but that's always going to be the case, right? I, I think it's 100 in quads. Um, yeah. which is obviously four people and I think it's 88 in singles in duos and single I may be wrong but it's something like that but you can play up to 100 players I mostly played quads and I did a bit of solo too but yeah I, 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 I it's not bad it's, it's not bad in fact I, like I said I think the multiplayer is really good I haven't played zombies uh, and mostly played blackout to see how I could get my head around it but 
yeah, I, I, I don't know. I can't, I can't explain it. It's this weird thing where I massively respect what Treyarch have done, looking at this trend and going, you know what, we want a piece of that pie. And as we've said, like it absolutely borrows loads of ideas from Fortnite and PUBG, and uh, unashamedly so too. Why wouldn't it? It's the biggest thing in the world. But I still don't think it's for me. And that, that's something that really surprised me. I was like, you know, I don't want to play Battle. If, if Call of Duty can't get me like it, and that was obviously the multiplayer game I loved when I was a kid, I was like, there's nothing that can do this. It's just not, unless someone comes up with a real spin on it, like, you know, the building in in Fortnite, but some in some other guys i just can't it's just yeah i i i think i'm too old sam <laughs> i don't think i can get my head yeah. around it i had to say I, I think with battlefield and call of duty now going into the first person space and then you got fortnite and PUBG owning the third person space i don't think there's any room for battle royale anymore i don't think there's any room for any other competitors you've got to do something really special to be competing with any of those and i really can't see any anyone matching any of those i think that it's locked down we have our battle royale titles good game everyone like i think it's just it's done like stop trying it's filled i, I think this is just gonna be the the four go-to games now no, I, I think you're right because Call of Duty and Battlefield can get away with a lot because they're Call of Duty and Battlefield. Again, my big intrigue here was, oh, I wonder what they'll do with Battle Royale. Maybe Battlefield has something up their sleeve. I don't know. I haven't played it. But for somebody else to try and enter it, I think, yeah, you either need massive name recognition. And I can't really think of any other games that have... I mean, Gears of War could probably do it, but I think it would be pointless. But they could. you Yeah, know, Halo I mean, as well, but yeah, I don't Halo, think... But I think it's pointless, right? But they could get away with it because of who they are. But yeah, in terms of other people now trying to enter, uh, yeah, enter what is going to become a very competitive space, especially because, like you said, you know, first-person Battle Royale is done now. We have it, and it's Call of Duty, which, whether you like it or not, is the most successful first-person shooter ever. <laughs> it just, you know, it, that, that's not an argument. You may prefer Battlefield, but Call of Duty numbers speak for themselves. So I think it would be hard to try, to try and hack this in. And maybe that's why I'm going to take a step back from it. Maybe this has proven to me that Blackout... Again, you will like Blackout if you like Battle Royale. I mean, you've played Fortnite more than me, Sam. I mean, I know you don't like the building so much. But do you feel like Blackout will now steal all your time away from Fortnite whether, when you want to play a, a Battle Royale mode? Of course, it's all uh, depending on who you play with. That's half of the... That's most of the joy of multiplayer games. But like, this is one of those games where I'm just like... I don't often be like, oh, could you, could you, we got to buy this to play this together for our friends. But like, this is one of those games I'm just like, this is, this would be sick with quads or duos or whatever. So yeah, it's, I think it could, I don't think it's still, still it away. Cause I think Fortnite, just, it's different. You know, I'm not sure it'd be like either this or Fortnite. I think, oh, should we go do a few games of black or blackout and shall we do a few games of Fortnite? That might be the thing. Um, but yeah, no, I uh, I really do think it's gonna be a long lasting joy because it's, it's different as well. It's the same principle in the sense that you're trying to whittle yourself down to the final players, but it's not it's not the same as Fortnite. And I think that's good because if it was just the same with first person, it'd be like, ugh, you know what I mean? No, you're right. No, totally. I, I, I think they would have been crazy to have done that. I will say I'm more interested to play quads. Uh, sorry, uh, duos, whatever the two player one is in Call of Duty. Just I think more people will be playing it. So yeah, I mean, in that sense, I, I I can see myself leaning more towards maybe picking it back up again and playing with a friend. But yeah, given how much, um, well, I, I don't know. I, I just die a lot, and I don't really know. I know why I'm dying, but I can't think of ways to <laughs> to counteract that. So eventually, I just like you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I just want to leave it be. But I do like it, and I like the presentation. I think. You know, as soon as that menu loads in Call of Duty, you realize what a ballsy move it was to get rid of that single player. Because I hadn't realized my PlayStation, uh, my PSN access had, um, had expired because I got a new bank account recently, blah, blah, blah. So I didn't have a, it didn't have it on record. And you, you load up Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and every mode has a, a padlock next to it. Yeah. And you're like, that's amazing. What a world we now live in. It's like, no, you may have bought this, but you can't play it because you don't have a PlayStation Network subscription. <laughs> and that, I mean, it was just you can go and do it offline. Yeah, I don't want to, you know, shit on it. I'm not shitting on it either. It's just you know, it made itself perfectly clear in the marketing. But you know, you could go into offline lobbies and and you know, and do all that kind of stuff. Should you so wish? But no one is doing Call of Duty for that. And it just made me think. You know what? Fair play, Activision and Track. I know it got a lot of grief, but you picked a you picked a route and you've gone with it. And now you can see whether or not it, it, it works. And they could, yeah. have, they could have just shut out another five-hour campaign that nobody liked, but they didn't. I guess you could look at it either way. You could say, well, they should have put more effort into it. Or I think you can look at it and go, well, they, they took a risk. And that's certainly what I thought when I saw padlocks next to everything. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's crazy how it's just 
I think a lot of that hype around or a lot of the negativity around the single player campaign, I think it died off just because I think nobody's going to miss it really. I, I think people are kidding themselves when they're, I think they're outraged for the sake that they think it's something to be outraged about. When you actually really think about it, I don't think a lot of people are going to miss it. No, I know. Well, they, they must have had the numbers, right? They must have been able yeah. to look at the numbers and go, look, this they're is not going to be like, everyone's playing the campaign. Let's take it out. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But just to go back to what I said earlier, I want to have a quick look. So Call of Duty WWE 2, we'll just do PS4 to make it easier. I know Metacritic ratings are not the be-all and end-all, but I think it's a good barometer of how people are approaching it. That is 79, and Black Ops 4 at the moment is on 87, which is a damn good Metacritic rating. And a lot of people, are, I, I really do think it's a good, again, while, while I don't think Blackout is going to win me over as much as I hoped, I actually think, again, I played multiplayer for a little bit too, I don't know. I just think there's something about it. I think it will do well. And I think it's one of the best Call of Duty's for... Again, I need to play it more. But tentatively, my, my feeling towards it is, yeah, this is, this is a good video game and will likely do well to the people that's intending to do well for. Yeah, and yeah, I think so. And with Blackout, I think it's got people talking more than it would have. Oh, yeah. And, and they had to do it. Like, imagine we didn't have this. I, think, I just think it would suck. So, yeah, I'd like to... Um, I'd like to see how, how it evolves because that's the best thing about Fortnite, or at least the most smartest thing about Fortnite, is that you know Epic managed to make it. I mean, you know, they, they charge you a lot of money for it too. Let's not pretend otherwise. But they, you know, they, they constantly find ways to keep it updating and keep it interesting. Like you know, people go nuts about a Cube <laughs> just being yeah. in the world, and I do think that's important within this mode now. I think Activision and Track need to stay on their toes. So I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll be intrigued to see what they do with that. But overall, look, good game. I mean, I, I, I like it. And yeah, please do come let Sam and I know what you think of the Blackout mode if you're a hardcore Battle Royale player. Because I think it's a conversation that will go for a while. But I... Um, have you played Zombies or anything? No, I want to, but I don't want to do it on my own. Uh, that's one of those ones I do want to actually get a group together. and then Because it looks really meaty this time around. And I want to like sink proper time into it. Because knowing how confusing the last few years have been for zombies. <laughs> uh, just knowing what to do and what will these machines mean. And yeah, I, I want to actually like put time into it rather than just sort of dip into it. Uh, so I'm going to wait till I get a squad together, or a quad, or whatever you call it for that. <laughs> I think the last one I played in zombies was... What was the one where you were in a hotel? The hell, there's probably loads where you're in a hotel. Hotel. I can't remember. It was like it's, it's like, it's like, it's like Bioshock. It was Bioshock themed, like all Art Nouveau or whatever the hell that uh, Art Deco. No idea. No, I can't remember. <laughs> I, that's like, it wasn't World War. What came out before World War Two? WW Two. World War Two is Infinite Warfare. Inf- I must have been Infinite Warfare. I didn't really like zombies in that. Well, that's probably more of a me thing than anything. I just couldn't. Uh, I was like, yeah. Also, actually, talking about Blackout, have you been to the asylum? No. When you go to the asylum, it's got zombies in it. Oh. Huh. Yeah, I, I just like naturally, well, I'm going to go over there, and I flew, into the, I flew into the asylum, and when you go in there, you get chased away by zombies. Oh, yeah, I, thought, I forgot there was, I keep forgetting there were zombies. In I forgot. House, obviously. I, I totally <laughs> forgot. I, I wasn't ready for that at all. It's going to be absolute shit out of me. I wasn't ready to just turn the corner and get chased by zombies, but that's the kind of stuff that I like, because I think it makes... I think it makes it more interesting. And I actually quite the way that they do perks as well. Like you literally just find perks on the floor and you yeah. pick it up and you activate it. I, 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 you know, it's got a, um, a, it basically lasts like a, a minute or two minutes. Yeah, I think wildcard elements help keep things fresh as well. Um, because just plain shooters get boring after a while. But if you put things like Fortnite, they put those shadow cubes and you float around like a little ghost and stuff like that. And it just, uh, it's silly, but it just makes things just, oh, there's a new thing, let's check it out each week or something. And then like, oh, I could get this perk in Blackout, or there might be zombies or whatever. So yeah, it's good to have these little silly things to keep things fresh. Yeah, I like the fact you can get a gun as well and then start picking up, you know, uh, scopes and whatnot. And then yeah, can, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, you can, like, you can basically, you start, it's not really about if you, what you've picked up as a good weapon, it's about whether how, what you feel about that weapon because you can find scopes and upgrades as you just walk through the world. So you're basically, you know, you're creating your class the, the longer you can survive. And I think, that was, I think that's really, really well done. There was something else I liked as well. Now I've forgotten about it. Oh, yeah, there's just health packs, health packs everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's so many health packs, which you think would be, oh, there's too many health packs. Yet somehow they never really help. It's, very- it's just because like, if you're in a firefight, you're taking a lot of damage anyway. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to keep you alive for much longer. No, but yeah, honestly, all that stuff is good. The way they've worked in perks and loadouts and classes that just kind of, I hate the term, but it works, are organically and naturally uh, introduced as, as you go through the world. Yeah, there's a lot of good ideas in there. there, there really I'll is. tell you the thing I love the most 
is that when you shoot people, they don't just build towers. And it's just fantastic. It's such a breath of fresh air kind of for Fortnite, <laughs> where you should pop one shot at someone, and it's like four walls, and then you just get a tower. It's like, ugh. But here, they just either drop shot or run away. It's great. It's so good. <laughs> Honestly, the more I think about it, the more I'm actually quite impressed with what they've done. Again, I just think this has proven to me that I, I'm not a Battle Royale player. I'm too old. I, I'm not good at it. I guess I'm not patient enough. And uh, yeah, I, I get sick of I get I get sick of it. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I I'm intrigued to see what this do, and I, I respect it. I th- like I said, I really do think uh, it's it's the best one they've done in a while. I think a lot of people are going to like it, especially if you have been waiting for a battle royale mode that feels a bit more triple A. That's a so the most condescending thing. I don't mean that. It feels a bit more Call of Duty. Yeah. Um, what do you want to do first? Sam? We want to do Venom. We want to do the missing. Let's do the missing, and then we'll talk about Venom because that will take yeah, us the ages. missing might be a shorter discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I'm intrigued about the missing because I never heard about it. I, I've looked it up. I got it playing in the background now. So it's the new guy, the new game by the guy that did uh, Deadly Premonition. Uh, sorry, the new, um, uh, what's it called? Deadly Premonition. Yeah, and D4, Dark Dreams Don't Die. <laughs> I've never played that, but I, I know that's what it's called. So he, he, he works for Arc System Works, right? That's his, is that? That's... I think he's got his own studio these days, and I don't know what it's called. Okay, um, but well... they're doing The Good Life at the moment. They're working on a game called The Good Life, where everyone turns into cats at night in this town. That sounds about Ugh. That sounds about right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like I guess I've got a trailer running in the background now, just to, to get a feel of it. Now, I know that um, this website is now singing to me, right? Turn that off. So I know that <laughs> Deadly Premonition is meant to be one of the weirdest games ever. I played it for a couple of hours way back on the videogamer.com days in a live stream with my good friend Chris Bratt, and I hated yep. it because it was just so slow, and I, I, the quirkiness was lost on me for, for one reason or another, much like Battle Royale modes. Yeah. But you said it to I me. Mean, I mean, if you, you don't like quirky, I've not played any games by this fellow apart from this one, okay. but it seems as if... The quirky is what he deals with. But see, I do like quirky, but his kind of... Is it slow... Pa- you know, you talk about it, I'll throw in some... Because my, my biggest point with Daily Premonition was it was so slow-paced, I wanted to rip my own face off. Yeah, I mean, this is roughly four to six hours. Um, it's definitely... like It's on the Switch, but it's not just an exclusive Switch game. It's very good for the Switch because it's a 2D platformer. You know, it suits that Switch sort of pace of play perfectly. Um, and it's basically... Uh, it's about this girl called JJ who <laughs> wakes up on an island that she's been with her friend Emily and Emily's gone missing. She is the missing. And uh, so basically you go after her, but you realize on this island that you can't die. Uh, you could regenerate your limbs and you could lose your limbs, uh, but you can't die. Uh, so it's a 2D platform where some, sometimes you have to get into narrow spaces by mass, like mutilating yourself so much that you're just a rolling head. And sometimes you need to cut <laughs> arms off and use it as a weight, like use your arm as a weight, and then you oh, can regenerate like with one button. Um, so it's a little bit quirky, a little bit different, um, but it's sort of balancing that horrific self-harm and mutilation of blood with the fact that it's so over the top and a bit ridiculous and a bit funny. Uh, it's it's a strange game, as you can imagine, obviously. Uh, my girlfriend was obviously play it, and she was like, what? What <laughs> is this? <laughs> And uh, it's it's even weirder because the voice actor... Have you ever played Silent Hill 2? Yes. Yeah, yeah. One of the weirdest yeah. games ever, yeah. You know the woman who is in that? Her voice acting is strange and sort of a bit distant. She's just like, hey there, where are you going? <laughs> See, that sounds like Deadly Premonition. That's what I hated. She yeah. takes forever to get her words out, right? Yeah, and you have that with your protagonist, except you, you, there's a button you can press, which is also to interact with things. And every time you press it, she does a voice line. She's like... Emily, who's there? <laughs> and it's just get this again and again and again. And it's just a strange game. But it's one of those, I, I think if it was made with, by anyone else but Sweary, he'd be, it would be like, what is this? Yeah. But I think it's just because, yes, this is great. Like David Cage, you know, and get away with stuff. Uh, it's, it's a very fun game. I'm talking da- as if it's weird and I'm distancing myself. But it's really, really, really good. And it's one of the most unsettling games because it gets into horror territory later on when you get deeper into the plot. Um, and yeah, just bizarre. But like, I like bizarre, I like unique. There's so much games that are like the same as everything else these days. And it's nice to get a game where you're just playing a 2D platformer where you have to rip your body parts off and use them to solve puzzles <laughs> and stuff. Like, that's a breath of fresh air. Like, <laughs> that's the best sentence ever. Games are getting a bit too boring, but this lets me rip my lips off to solve puzzles. So it's good. That is excellent. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't, how can I argue that as well? How can anybody argue that? 
Um, yeah. I, 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 look, I don't mind the weird at all. Like I said, I think there's a line. Like my worry um, is that, you know, take something like Death Stranding, I think that's going to go way too far. The fact that yeah. we keep getting all these trailers, I don't even think Kojima knows what that game is at the moment. But, mm. you know, like I said, in terms of how you've described it, and like I'm looking at it now, just getting an idea of it, it is something I'd probably like to play. It's just, I'm so worried about that last game. That, again, Deadly Premonition was, I, I don't know, I just, I, I just couldn't get into it. But I think the, the benefit of this is, because it is a lot it, visually and, and aesthetically, it's stripped back, it's kind of, I, I assume the whole thing is 2D, it certainly seems like it is. Yep. You know, it's more of a basic platformer, whereas Deadly Premonition was this open world, and you know, it was too much to do. Whereas this one, if it's much more streamlined and you know, focused on what it wants you to do. And what's the overall goal? What are you trying to achieve apart from ripping your limbs off? Well, you're trying to find Emily. All um, oh, right, so that is the thing. Right, she's okay. gone missing. Yeah. So, yeah. And it, the, the story, I won't spoil anything, but the story takes a really weird turn. And it's, it's really good. It's really unexpected. Um, yeah, it sort of left me a bit surprised. I think the whole game left me surprised, to be honest. But, yeah, it's... Uh, it's it's good because it's it's not too long either. Like you said, it could be a bit of a slog getting through those open world games because I think weirdness can only go on for so long. Yeah. And then it's nice to have that little compact package with this. Yeah. No, I think that's fair. I mean, it's out, it's a twenty five quid as well. Out on PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, PC. Came out on Friday, eleventh of October. I think that was Friday. It was first Thursday. Um. Yeah. I. I. The more I look at it, and the more you told me about it, I'm certainly. I'm certainly. I'm certainly intrigued. <laughs> And, yeah, uh, I played it on PC, but I definitely recommend it for Switch. I think it's much, much better for Switch, that's especially what, if you've got a long flight or something. Yeah, that's why I think the Switch comes into its own with games like this. It's absolutely yeah. something, exactly, if I'm going a long flight or long bus trip or whatever, it's absolutely something I'm willing to take a risk on on my Switch, because I feel like that's almost what it was designed for, is for these kind of stripped-down games that have a, a unique twist I can take on the go yeah, so, and you yeah. can do it in short bursts and you don't have to like commit loads of time into It's great. Yeah, no, absolutely. So Missing, you can check it out now. Again, just type it. You can't, unfortunately, you can't type in The Missing because you get a TV show that's on Amazon Prime. So make yeah, sure you it's type got it. A long t- I can't remember what the title is called. The, the, the official typing is The Missing, J.J. Macfield and the Island of Memories. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah yeah exactly so i i bet i bet they were pleased when when they announced that but genuinely yeah i mean just go watch the launch trailer it's one of those launch trailers where you actually get quite a lot out of it yeah you know you can kind of get a feel and yeah it does look like an old school classic platformer but I, at the moment i'm just watching her head as you say just roll to get under yeah. it to get under <laughs> a gate so <laughs> i think that sums it up i, I like look man I, I i think stuff like that is pivotal to video games especially in 2018 as budgets continue to go to go up and up and simply because i've just said that we'll do we'll do red dead first before we do venom i know people are gonna get mad so it will come it'll be a big discussion at the end but yeah. all the all the red dead redemption uh i wouldn't necessarily call it information but a bunch of red dead news came out today pretty much and it goes yeah. it, it ties back into this idea of the crunch at the end of a video game, if you don't know what the crunch is, it's essentially, and I can't tell you why it happens, I don't know, I mean, because the argument has always been, why can't management, you know, why can't management these video game studios, why aren't they able to, you know, calendar or program or schedule these things so that they don't have to put all this time in. But for some reason, before uh, a full release date, it does, you know, the usual trend is that developers will put in hundreds of hours a week trying to get games finished. And that's what Dan Hauser has come out, who's uh, one of the founders of Rockstar saying is the is happening with Red Dead Redemption 2 now. It says it's one of the hardest games uh, Rockstar's ever done. You know, the team's been putting a hundred hundred a hundred hour weeks and just, yep. you know, just you know, that's basically, you know, remember there's only twenty four hours in a day. <laughs> so it's like um and but the other thing as well is they say it's not like I think the interesting one with this one is this for me anyway, what I took away from his comments, he was I should say he was talking to as well, talking to Vulture. You can go up to Vulture.com now and read the entire article. Is he also said you know, we were working 100-hour weeks multiple times this year, and I think that's the. I think it's the latter part of that sentence that's interesting because you have to start questioning yeah. how many are we talking about. And look, I'm, I find it difficult to talk about this because I don't want to sound disparaging, and I understand that it is an issue. Nobody should have to work that hard, but I'm also under. I, I need to talk to individuals before I kind of make bland, sweeping statements because maybe the. And I'm not saying this is the case. But there's every chance people there love working like that, and they're so dedicated, and passionate about their jobs. They don't care. I'm not saying that is the case. I'm just saying if I ever sound like I'm towing the line a bit when it comes to the crunch, it's because I'm 100% towing the line and I would need to speak to individual people before I just generalize an entire company. I don't think that's fair. Yeah. Um, but it, it is interesting. It certainly sounds like, again, it's been in the works for around seven years. 
I think from the interview you'll read, this is the most ambitious game they've ever done. That is usually the case with Rockstar Games anyway, but Dan Hauser seems to be particularly intrigued and fond of, of, of how this one turns out. But I don't know, Sam, what's your take on it? Because like, I understand both sides of the argument. Like I saw somebody, again, this is me, don't shoot the messenger, but I saw someone on Twitter earlier say, you know, they don't have to do that job if they don't want to. Now, I think that's a bit harsh because, you know, you don't know their life situations. And sometimes when we get into jobs, you can't just walk away and leave. That's irresponsible. Yeah. But I, I think that was a, I think he, he, I think that person made his point poorly. I think what he was trying to say is maybe they actually enjoy their jobs. And that's, that's my thing is, is that I don't think any, it, look, if, it, let's say carte blanche, everybody there is miserable, then yeah, there's a huge problem. That's not what we want. You shouldn't be wearing people out, especially in the creative industry. Anyway, give me a take. I'm rambling now, but I just find it such a difficult thing to talk about. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people. I've not looked on Twitter. So I'm not seeing this question. I reckon some people are saying it's probably a case of like, why are you working these people so hard, sort of thing. Uh, you should have managed it better or delayed it or whatever. But I think no matter what stage this game would be at, because Rockstar are Rockstar and they put in so much detail to their games, always coming up to release, it would be 100 out of weeks, no matter what they were doing. If it was ready for release right now they still find 100 hour weeks to put in more, even more polish yeah, even right. more detail I think it would always be 100 hour weeks with a game like Rockstar Cause you, could you imagine Rockstar being like oh we've got two weeks till the deadline let's just sit back and chill like, <laughs> they're, not, they're not those types of developers true. and I know it's not fair to be like oh but they're just doing 100 hour weeks that's just what they do um, but I just think it's a case with Rockstar I think that's going to be the case um, but it does raise a question, put a pin in that, it does raise a question as to how how much they should be working as developers. And especially when you hear the sometimes startling lack of job security that developers have yeah, that, to yeah. be worked so hard. And then, you know, this isn't about Telltale, but to have those sort of situations where it's like working so hard and then not having job security. I, yeah, I do see why people are a bit concerned for the welfare of developers, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure Rockstar aren't treating their developers badly. I, I think they're the creme de la creme of developers, so I can't imagine they're like, you know, really de- treating them badly. No, I'm the same. And like I say, if we talk about Telltale, I, I'm the first to say that's, that was a terrible situation and you should never, you know, be worked that way and then let go. It's just horrendous because... It's just not how the world should be. And especially, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, pimp myself out here, but just as the, you know, example of how much I do care about this stuff, I have a whole video series on my YouTube channel about mental health. I think it's one of the most important things in the world. So I certainly, if anyone is struggling, I certainly wouldn't endorse that. But as you just said, Sam, I don't know what the situation within Rockstar is. So I find it difficult to, to criticize yeah. because I don't know. But yeah, I mean, in terms of a headline, do I think working 100 hours a week is potentially bad? Of course I do. But until I talk to those individual people, I don't want to talk on their behalf. Simply because I wouldn't want someone to do that to me either. You know, I've worked weeks where I've worked maybe not 100 hours, but certainly up there. But I chose to do them because I enjoyed it. So, you know, but I mean, look, the point is, it's a big project. Other uh, news that came out, it's going to take around 65 hours to complete. It's got a 2,000-page script, uses over 300,000 animations, and has a whopping half a million line of di- lines of dialogue. Half yep. a million. So that's where the 100 hours is coming from. Uh, you've also got addition. You've got 50-plus weapons, 200 species of animals, 90 gigabytes <laughs> on Microsoft uh, Xbox One. And if on PS4, for some reason, you get... 30 uh, you get a bunch of in-game content 30 days before anybody else i don't know what that's about is that a deal with rock i guess it's because they used to be it a sony be, yeah. yeah just because they used to be loving but yeah I, I was like okay uh but yeah it comes out october 26th so as we record this we are but for 15 10 days away 11 days that away mad. i mean where did that come from where did that come from and then we have to talk about it for at least two weeks if not more <laughs> because there'll be so much uh, there'll be so much to say but yeah so it weigh in let us know like no one is saying having to work that hard under bad negative conditions is good but you know uh, the, the idea of the crunch in 2018 is is a, is a difficult well for me I, I think it's a difficult topic of conversation um, yeah very difficult yeah yeah right we'll get to it now we, we've done enough talking about anything else last week we had a very headline you know Shallow, com- well, shallow conversation we could about Venom because I hadn't seen it we didn't want to spawn anything we are going to get into everything that we possibly can now because I went to see it on Friday I've made a video about this you go watch it now on youtube.com for the mirror report rules 
I can't remember. So I loved it. <laughs> I thought. Are we definitely talking spoilers, by the way? Yes, we, we are. Yeah, sorry, one hundred percent spoilers. If you haven't okay. seen Venom, that's why, that's why it's good we've left it towards the end because that way you can listen to everything else in the podcast, and now you know it's open season, so you can turn this down, turn it off, yeah. and you can come back in a few weeks, few days, whatever. Once you've seen Venom, but no, I, I want to talk about everything I can. I thought it was absolutely brilliant, and I thought it was brilliant for the reasons that everybody else seems to hate it, or at least the you know the reviews that I've read. Because they, they say it's a mess of a movie. There's no chemistry between the cast. Tom, Ho- Tom Hardy feels, you know, off his rocker. But that's the reason I, I thought it was great. Because Tom Hardy, from the first minute, I think you said this last week, comes across like an insane person. Like, it, yeah. it, it doesn't feel like he is grounded within the world that's been set up for him. It feels like he is the alien in where's it set is it new york i can't remember where it's no, set san, now, francisco, san francisco because i think they wanted to move it away from new york oh, that makes sense I, I didn't actually i didn't even note where it was but yeah he doesn't feel grounded or like he actually exists within within san francisco he just feels i don't even know what he feels like it's, it's just absolutely bizarre and everyone criticized his relationship with michelle williams that's her name right the the actress um, i absolutely have no idea i think her, <laughs> I think, I think her name is Anne. It is Anne, Anne in the movie but i loved it because i always i really did feel like everybody sat down they read the script and they looked at each other and went this is a really odd film right and they went yeah and they said does that mean we should just act really odd as well they all went yeah i guess it probably does and I, don't, I just thought it was entertaining. I thought it was stupid. I thought given the fact that Tom Hardy's whole role in this movie was to have conversations with an invisible voice, that he did an incredible role. And also, while, you know, it's from a, a storyline point of view, why him and Venom become friends, I have absolutely no idea. I know, I, 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 I know. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it because somehow Tom Hardy had chemistry with the voice in his head. I, I like, I, I, don't get me wrong. You can criticize it and you can poke holes in it till the cows come home. And I would, I would sit there with my hands in the air going, yep, you're not wrong. But if I said, did I hate it? I, I did not. <laughs> I thought it was good. But I mean, it literally, they do become friends because they're both losers. Even though Eddie Brock is not a loser. Anyway, I mean, I don't know. I, I, it was, it's so strange. It, I'm amazed it got made, but I'm happy that it did. Yeah, I, I, I walked out of the cinema and I was like, what was that? But then as soon as time passed, I was like, I actually really enjoyed that. It was it was it was trash, but it was it was good trash. It was nice trash. Yeah, I I I I, I totally agree with you. And I think as well, I think it's one of those situations where it proves that any form of entertainment, if you go all in on a concept, and I really I don't. A lot of people said they thought the the cast phoned it in. I don't think they did. I think everybody agreed. Like I say, to just run around and be mental. And I think because yeah. they decided to do that, that's why. I feel like that's why it worked. I don't know. I I, I can't explain it. Um, but. I, yeah, it was just crazy. There's some crazy megalomaniac trying to stick aliens in people and they're dying. And then his right-hand woman decides, ah, screw this, and she sells him out. And Eddie Brock is against it, but then two minutes later, he goes, ah, I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> it's just, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of weird stuff with MRI machines that don't add up to any logic or physics or chemistry, biology, whatever that I've ever heard. You know, there's a small... Um, a small, you know, sort of subplot about the symbiotes not being able to respond or not responding well to volume when it's over a certain hertz, and that just gets thrown out the window. I, it's just, I couldn't, I can't, and again, it's just a, an absolutely crazy movie, but it's one I want to watch again. And I think to me, that is the, that's the main selling point of any film. If I can walk away and think, you know what, I enjoyed that and I want to see it again, then it, it has to have done something right. Now that we're talking about spoilers, I've got to mention my, my the thing that annoys me most about that film, right? Yeah. Venom is all like, I want to destroy your planet. And it's like, okay, <laughs> cool, that's his motivation. And then suddenly he's like, I don't want to anymore. And then Tom Hardy's like, why? And he's like, because of you. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that annoyed me. Because so, I was just like, oh, okay, cool. We're going to Batman vs Superman, like Mum's name motivations now. Like, I mean, you're it right. was just such a U turn. I, I, oh, it just blew me away. I, I forgot you mentioned that last week about Batman vs Superman. You are a hundred percent right. It's almost yeah. as if there was no ideas, you know, none whatsoever of how they could actually make this work, and or, or maybe there was time constraints. I know a lot got cut out of that movie, so you know, but. I, I, I don't know. You're right. He, he literally does say, well, look, I was a bit of a loser on my planet. So I can tell that you're a bit of a loser. And therefore, I feel like we can just be losers together. And that will, you know, that will, that will make things a bit better. Which is <laughs> it's just crazy. Like, it, I mean, it's a crazy movie. I'm not saying that it, it, it holds, 
that it's concrete and it, it you know there are, are so many ways that we can we can poke holes in it which we are doing as, as we should do but I, I don't know what i think i was all right with it just because it was so silly i think that was the yes. main thing i just thought it was so silly that i i was all right i you know i was all right I let, I let them get away with a lot. I think I do think Tom Hardy performs well. I don't know what this... I mean, you may disagree with me, which is fine. I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts on it. But again, a lot of what I read in the reviews was that Tom Hardy's performance is weird. It doesn't work. I think Tom Hardy's performance is the best thing about it. Yeah, you know, I, I think if anybody else had tried to pull this off, it would have been an absolute catastrophe. I, I didn't think that at all. I, I thought he was the... Yeah, this was it. This was the best. I think it was funny. I think it was almost Nicholas Cage. Like it was, yes. Oh man, great show. Absolutely great just, show. I just don't get it because Tom Hardy has done a lot of films, and I've been like, okay, he's very good. He's very, he's quite a serious dude anyway. But to see him just go off the deep end in this, it's just like, <laughs> what, what happened? Uh, dear, even his accent is nuts. Like it, yeah, it, it's, it's just slurry as well. I've said this before, but honestly, he just needs to enunciate a bit more. Like Peaky Blinders here, just just say your words properly, Tom. Yeah, please. even even the have you ever seen the clip from the original Dark Knight movie, uh, Dark Knight Rises movie? Yeah, well, they just dubbed it. I, I loved it though. I loved it because I thought it makes the character ten times scarier because he comes across like a nutball. It's like why can't he? Why can't I hear anything that he's saying? I mean, you are right. There, there is a huge hole in that movie in the sense that, yeah, halfway through you learn that Venom, who has come from space, has now decided he, he doesn't care about taking over the world because he was a bit of a loser on his planet. Tom Hardy was a bit of a loser, and now he can stay there. Obviously, at this point, Riot has also inhabited, I don't even know the name of the bad person's body, but he's inhabited body, and they're going to go on and try and take over the world. Um, also, I found it amazing that basically three quarters of the movie is that old, is that crazy... Uh, CEO guy trying to get these symbiotes to combine with human bodies and then one just finds him and it's fine that was, yep. that was never explained what are the odds of that that those two just happened that was never explained at all also, and how did that little girl walk into his laboratory oh, oh man see I knew you were going to mention that because I went to watch with a mate and when that happened I turned to him and I said a friend of mine point hey, that's the bit he was talking about I knew that was one of the bits you were talking about when you said it made no sense a little girl gets into a high security <laughs> facility and it is never explained at all oh man but I don't know I think it knows all of that I think if you sat down with any of them they'd be like yeah we know but and that's why I think I liked it I think it just it, 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 I just didn't care and it allowed it allowed me not to care but you know I, I totally admit that it's it's not without its flaws. What, what did you think of the two post credit scenes? Because, again, I'm not a big enough Spider-Man fan. Um, obviously, I'd read about it beforehand, so that helped. But beforehand, I did have to go and read about who Woody Harrelson was. Um, and actually, that was quite cool. That, to me, sounded like something... What, Spider the actor? Uh, <laughs> <you know, laughs> who he was playing in Venom? Because I didn't know, I didn't know there were more symbiotes. You know, I had no idea about any of yeah. this. Uh, but did you know about all that kind of stuff? Like, What was your take when, when you saw all of that? Or was that something you had to go research as well? See, I'm not a Spider-Man dude. But I've dipped into it enough, and I know the fan base enough to know that Carnage is someone that has been totally underrepresented, but everyone loves. And I think it's maybe because he's so hard to do. Um, but I played the uh, the PS1 Spider-Man game, which had Carnage in. That was amazing. And <laughs> Carnage is one of my favourite characters in the whole of superhero universes. And I was just like, oh, he's got red hair. It's got to be Carnage. It's got to be Carnage. And then when he said it's got to be Carnage, I was like, yes. And I was, I'm, I'm really hyped for that. That's cool. And as for the Into the Spider-Verse or whatever that animated film's called, it, it was sort of like a trailer for another film. So I was a bit like, right. Yeah, what, what, I, cause my, my mate apparently, I think he's got kids, so he knew about that. But I was like, what the hell is that? I, 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 I did you get the trailer for the film beforehand? Because I did as well in the cinema. Oh, no, beforehand I did not get. I just At the end, there was all of a sudden just some cartoon version of Spider-Man. Right uh, okay, and I was right, like, what yeah. the hell is this? What was that? I still don't know what uh, that well, was. Well, it's um, Miles Morales uh, in an alternate universe and someone rips a hole in the space-time continuum or something. And then there's all these different Spider-Mans come flooding in and then he's talking to Peter Parker and then he's talking to a spider-pig and... It looks bizarre, but I mean, it seems to be because a lot of people want Miles Morales more represented in films and games as well. So I think it's it's one that the real hardcore fans are loving. I, I I'm a bit like all right, I guess. But that but that is a movie that's coming at the end of this year. Yeah, and so and Nicolas Cage is one of the Spider Mans, correct? 
Is he? That's what I heard, yes. I heard okay, he... cool. Well, I'm down then. I'm down. <laughs> I heard that he was doing, I don't know which one, but one of the the names I remember are Liv, I can't pronounce his name, but Liv Schreiber, that guy. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce his name. And, I, and Nicholas, um, Nicholas Cage, the only two people I recognised when, when they had a casting. Okay. Well, so that literally was a trailer for a film that's coming out later in the year. Yeah. Okay, but that was weird. That was, that was very weird. But I liked And I also think when you transition to... Um, you know, Woody Harrelson, who is a big name actor and sort of making his comeback at the moment as he keeps doing all these words, well, did it for a few years now. That to me is just another reason to get excited about things. I got me excited. I was like, awesome. I, I, I watched Woody Harrelson in a, in a, you know, in, in a Venom 2 or whatever movie. I think that'd be really interesting. Yeah, it should be really good. Um, I think he's, he's a bit insane as well. He's good at the whole insanity thing. Um, so I think he's a good, he's a, Perfect actor for Carnage if they can do it right. Yeah, no. So we'll I, see. The thing is, I don't want it to be like one of those solo things where people see it gets canned and then they put all these projects on hold um, because I think they've got more villain projects in the work than just Carnage. And I just want them to like, see it through because even though I think Venom wasn't a very good film by the traditional standards, I still want to see more of what they can produce in that. I think they're onto something. Yeah. That probably sounds crazy. I, I think they have something here that feels different to the mcu but doesn't screw things up when it comes to what dc have done where yeah. they, they, they just can't see it. it feels unique and given how because it's the other thing i read that this was as bad as that atrocious fantastic four movie that sony made not at all which one though both bad oh which or was I, that the one with Ma, um miles teller and stuff like that yeah yeah that one yeah like, yeah, not, I never saw that, but that, I heard it was just been... Not just in a million years. This can be enjoyed for what it is. Like, I understand if um, uh, sort of a hardcore Spider-Man fan feels like Venom's been... And I get it, he's not really a villain in this movie anymore, right? So I, I can understand somebody getting on it for that reason. But in terms of a movie and what it wants to do, it's no way. Those films were bad. There was no takeaways from those Fantastic Four movies. They were just uh, dry and drab and exhausting. This at least has an upside, or at least I think it has an upside. Like, the thing is, they've made it so camp and so over the top in terms of its humor. Well, I'm not sure whether they meant it to be as funny, but yeah, it's just they they just committed all in with that. And I think, unless it's a real train wreck, comedies are still watchable, and it is a fun film. And the action sequences, we haven't even talked about those. The Venom sequences are really good. If only oh, there yeah. were more of those, really good scenes, really good. No, and also, I, I thought the CGI... I read that the CGI was shit. I thought all those times that he turned into Venom, he looked great. Maybe that's just... I think he was really good. I think, especially with the uh, motorbike chase. Yeah, I thought that was... And also, all the eating of the heads, I thought that was quite a funny sort of, you know, ongoing thing. Like, you just say that dude's head. Yeah, dude. I just thought it was good. What do I know? What do I know? I thought it poked fun at itself and... Yeah, well, pff, I don't know. I also don't understand why, you know, the old homeless woman that he befriends and then gets kidnapped and put a symbiote in. Yeah. Apparently, she was fine with that symbiote in her. So why weren't they doing more tests on her? Because when Tom Hardy meets her, she's not dead. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Also, if he's trying to stalk about a secret facility, why did he smash the window open? Well, I, I, I do. <laughs> what did you think of the last fight, by the way? The last what, sorry? The last fight. Between uh, it was all right. I mean, it was a bit like, every action film I've ever seen. I think it's sort of, it could have done the right being a dramatically different colour. It had a bit of Transformers syndrome. You know what? Sense. That I, It wasn't really clear what was going on. That is so true. It basically looked like Venom fighting Venom, right? It just splooge all over the screen. That I is, just didn't know who was winning. I totally agree with that. You are 100% correct there. But again, I thought that was actually one of the weaker points of the movie. It was just like, meh. You know. And then when they merged into one, I was like, what? What? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I don't know. There, there's a lot of weird... A, and why does it love tater tots? Is that a thing in the comments? I don't know. <sighs> it just, Ven, Venom loves tater tots for some reason. Even though at one point, he makes it pretty clear that he can only eat humans, but then he's eating tater tots. So, and, and yeah. all, the, all, the, all the weird stuff with his uh, next door neighbor as well, playing metal, that lasts all of 32 seconds. Yeah. It's a weird movie, everybody. But I tell you, I, I, I got a right kick out of it. I can't lie. I can't. I'll tell you what, this would be a great, you know, Netflix buddy series, a comedy buddy <laughs> series. It would be great. Like, honestly, they commit to like, hey, we should eat that guy's brains. No, we can't eat that guy's brains. Oh, what do you like? Sort <laughs> of thing. A... Like, they, they've already got that set up. It would be great. And I tell you, Tom Hardy makes it work. Tom Hardy is the glue. Like the Marvel. 
maybe they already have. Maybe that's where they go. If it doesn't do well, I think it has done well, though, right? I think it's. I know, I'll look it up quickly. I think it, the sales have been really good. Also, yeah, it's sold well, so that's all they need to care yeah, about. It's done. I mean, it's already made three hundred seventy million dollars. Uh, when I I, I posted on Twitter somewhat facetiously, but I do think I, I I mean it from an entertainment standpoint that I enjoyed. Um, Venom more than I have the Spider-Man movies. I think just because I prefer Venom as a character to Spider-Man. And so many people got in touch with me saying, you can't say that because this if Marvel sees this as a growing opinion, they're going to cancel Spider-Man. I was like, what? Why? Do you ever think that they're going to cancel Spider-Man? No, that, that, like... that's just crazy Twitter people, right? I was like, maybe there's something I don't know here. But like, that sounds like the, the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Could you imagine people like, yep, Simon Miller said he likes Venom. Let's cancel Spider-Man, guys. Wrap it up. <laughs> but no, they were saying that this is a general consensus that's growing throughout the internet and stuff. If Marvel hears about it, Spider-Man is screwed. And I was like, what are you talking about? That sounds like the ramblings of crazy conspiracy theory people. Yeah, I can't imagine. I can't, I, I can't I, imagine a world where you think that Spider-Man would be canned in favour of Venom. I thought, I thought I'd miss something when it comes to those things. Clearly, of course I haven't. Of course, it's crazy internet people. Why did I? It's think like otherwise? let's can Batman and focus on Robin. Like it's just you, you need to have the, the mainline <laughs> series active for these spin-offs Man. to happen. If, like, they, if, the they, if, if they ever do that, then I will be mad. Then you'll see some. <laughs> then, you, then you'll see some proper rage. I will. I will kick some ass. I hate Robin. Worst part of that series. Anyway, yes, I like Venom. I. I it surprised me far more than I, I ever could have imagined. Two thumbs up from me. I did prefer it to the Spider-Man movies. Not because the Spider-Man movies are bad, but I like bizarre, bad movies. I wouldn't even call it a bad movie. I like bizarre movies that don't work quite how you think they're going to work. And for that reason, it, yeah. gets, it, gets, a tick up, uh, it gets a tick up from me. Uh, I think that's everything that's gone down this week. Uh, there's some stuff to do with Diablo 3 coming out to Switch. So if you went into Diablo 3 and you wanted to Switch, you can do that. Not really my thing. Uh, and that's about, I mean, that's about it. There was some noise about you know Shenmue was going to be completely remade, much like um, Final Fantasy VII is, but instead they did the remasters and focused on three instead. Don't care about Shenmue, so that's not for me. That was that. Black Ops came out. Everyone's playing it. Yeah, basically Black Ops until Red Dead, and then Red Dead until next year. So. <laughs> that's true. And that, my friends, is The Week in Gaming. Sam, thank you as always for joining me. My pleasure. You can find Sam on Twitter at Sam Bishop, three Ps and a one. That's right, right? I, I, yep. I, I always say, I'm going to look you up now. Sam Bishop, that is, is the most... Is that Sam Bish? That's got to be right. Search. Oh, I've done that wrong straight away. I've done that wrong. <laughs> I'll do it when I'm not trying to talk at the same time. Go follow Sam on there. Let him know. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Sam316, youtube.com, forward to the middle report rules. If you are listening on uh, iTunes, give us five stars. Uh, the wrestling podcast drops every Wednesday. You can come and join me that. I think I'm going to start live streaming them. So make sure you do sign up to youtube.com for the Minute Report rules if you want to see those. What else do I do? Oh, my Patreon, of course. All supported by the Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Simon Miller 316. And even if you could go throw a dollar in there, it helps me no end. It allows me to do all this stuff even more. And yeah, that's, that's, that's about it. Thank you for listening. That was The Week in Gaming. And we'll be back in one week's time to talk about it all over again. Yeah.